Welcome everyone to a special edition of the Digital Debate Center. Today we're continuing our discussion of the evidence by talking about the pandemic negative. Uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about the deterrence disadvantage. So let's start by reviewing the idea of a disadvantage, and then we'll go through each part. So a disadvantage says that the status quo is pretty good, but the plan makes a big change, and that change leads to bad things. So uniqueness is the first part of a disadvantage. It says that the status quo is pretty all right right now. And here, this last Conjarius evidence says that NATO defense spending is on the brink. So there are two problems that are taking place right now. The first is that Russia has invaded Ukraine, which has caused European countries to drastically increase their defense expenditures. So what's the problem? That's the second part. The second part is that the coronavirus has really harmed the economy of pretty much everyone, right? So as a result, we're increasing spending but don't really have a good economy. We have a limited amount of funds and we're investing them in defense right now. So what does the plan do? Well, the plan expands NATO's mission. It says, hey, that money that you have a limited amount of that you're trying to invest in NATO's defense to help deter Russia, well, actually we need some of that for public health, right? Because remember the plan is pretty expensive. It needs to stockpile supplies, help to, with vaccine development, create new uh, fully fund organizations that currently exist, uh, increase training, increase research. All of these things cost money. And the Ceccarelli evidence says that, you know, the change to the status quo that the plan makes? Well, NATO is going to overstretch its capacities. It's going to drain limited resources and take them out of core missions. In other words, by forcing NATO to focus its resources on pandemics, it can't focus its resources on Russia. So why does that matter? Well, this coach of seven says that Russia is acting increasingly aggressive, right? Russia is an existential threat to NATO member states. And as Russia gets more aggressive in Ukraine, NATO needs to send a strong signal that it is able to respond effectively to Russian aggression. Otherwise, Russia might risk invading. So in other words, we need NATO to focus on Russia because otherwise Russia might attack. The fourth argument is the impact. This is the ultimate negative consequence. This is why we care about the disadvantage. And the Schlosser evidence says that Russia is acting aggressive. And it's not just acting aggressively in Ukraine. It's threatening to att attack Western countries with its nuclear weapons. And it's committed to acts of nuclear terrorism by shelling nuclear reactors at Chernobyl and other places in Ukraine. That means that we can no longer take into account that Russia would act rationally and not use nuclear weapons. Instead, Russia is acting so aggressively, we have to take them at their word. And if Russia senses weakness and gets into a war, there might be an incentive for Russia to use nuclear weapons. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure NATO stays focused on Russia and doesn't divert resources away from deterrence to focusing on pandemic response. So what does the deterrence disadvantage say? It says, hey... NATO has limited budgets. It's focusing on deterring Russia right now. The plan forces it to divert its resources to pandemic response. That's a problem because it means it can't focus on its core mission, and that risks war with Russia. So hopefully this made sense to everyone. Uh, this is our core disadvantage for the pandemic affirmative. So you'll be hearing it a lot. Hope to see y'all make this argument at some point in the fall.